All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Normally I turn my mic on before I get everything all set up, but I'm a little discombobulated this morning. So tell me you can hear me. Mm, let's see who we have here. Good morning, everybody. Oh my goodness. Okay, wonderful. It's been two weeks since we've talked um, as far as Master Plan Monday goes. And I spent the entire weekend um, organizing, decluttering my planner, my schedule, my um, digital schedule, everything. And I thought that would be a great topic to cover today because if I felt the need to do that going into the new year, um, I figured you might too. Let me see. Thank you, Libby. Good morning, Safona. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning, Susie. <gasps> They're scrolling. Oh, okay. Good morning, Tina, Shirley. We got all sorts of people in here this morning. Good morning, Celia. All right. So today um, I'm calling it decluttering your planner to declutter your life. Um, I feel like when your planner is uh, filled with things that don't belong there, um, it's really hard to find what you're looking for, right? And so just the, the core nature of that makes you want to declutter. Um, so let's see. Uh, if you're new, please tell us in the comments. If you're watching a replay later, please tell us that too. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, make sure you hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when we go live. We go live a lot. Uh, make sure you like this video. Um, we do a lot of training. It's all for you. Um, on Mondays, we do our Master Plan Monday. Uh, it's so that you can level up, you can be more functional with your planning and your life. It's not always about planning. Um, and then every Thursday we go live and we talk about specific products, the subscription box, things that are going on in the shop. Um, but Mondays are all about helping, helping you. Uh, let's see. Good morning, Kayla. All right. So last master plan, two weeks ago, we talked about, um, setting up your planner for the new year. Uh, if you missed that, you can go um, read the blog post, watch the video. I made you a quick link. It's um, janesagenda.com slash 24. I'll throw that on the screen so you can see it. Um, you can go watch that afterwards. It's all about setting up your planner for 2024 if you haven't already done that. Um, great idea to do that too. You might even want to do it after you do today's video because once your planner is fully decluttered, um, it might be easier to set everything up. Um, and so great video. We got a lot of great feedback. Um, how is everybody doing with that? Did you all get your, um, did you get your planner set up? How confident are you feeling? Give me a one to five, five being ridiculously confident going into 2024 here, um, or one not even started. How are we feeling? Good morning, Linda. Five from Safona. five. Oh, I got a lot of fives. Wonderful. Cool. We got some threes, three and a half. Shannon, oh, yeah. If you need more help, you reach out, okay? Um, we do have the video from the last time, but we're always here. You can always email, um, reach out in comments, or send me a message. I'm here to help. <laughs> Celia, I need more. You know what? I never, I never have enough inserts. I'm just letting you know. I could have all the inserts and still feel like I need more. Hmm. All right, so we're not doing too bad. It looks like the average is somewhere around a three and a half to a four. That's pretty good. That's not disappointing at all. That means you might be ready for today. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's see. We're gonna talk about decluttering. I started thinking about um, everybody at the last, was it the last one or the one before that when we talked about goals. Um, everybody's talking about decluttering their houses and um, Though my house may be cluttered, it's not going to affect my schedule or my task list the same way having my planner is. Um, and so today we're going to talk about um, how to declutter your planner and some tips that will help you also start decluttering other parts of your life. Um, reasons that uh, decluttering is important. Uh, it increases clarity and focus, right? Less clutter means fewer distractions, enhancing your ability to focus on goals and daily tasks, um, enhanced productivity. An organized planner leads to efficient time use, making you more productive, goal-oriented. Um, it reduces stress and anxiety. You stop having that overwhelm when you look at your planner. 
um, your improved time management. You're probably going to show up places more often because you know when you're supposed to be places. Um, it gives you the freedom to be creative. I know when I have a big empty slate, um, like say I've got a big fresh pack of dot grid, I've never felt more creative, right? I'm very like, let's do this focused and um, ready to go. And so I think that's a good one. Um, you're ready for new opportunities that way. You can tackle challenges more confidently. Um, let's see. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment, right? Having an organized planner, having an organized life makes you feel good. And it helps you have a healthier lifestyle, healthier habits. Um, so there's all sorts of good reasons, good reasons to, to do this decluttering. Um, so the first thing we're really going to talk about today, let's see, I'm going to try to keep it organized here. So if you decide to come back and scroll around, um, you can find what we're talking about. So the first thing we're going to talk about is understanding um, what needs to be decluttered, right? So um, I, I kind of listed out the 10 most common signs of needing to have your planner decluttered if your planner is cluttered. Um, the first one is if your appointments overlap. Um, that happened to us actually last week. Um, my husband made appointments at the same time as we had a dentist appointment that he needed to participate in for the kids. And so we had to cancel the dentist appointment and it was a whole big thing, right? Big sign right there. It's time to start straightening out your planner. Um, and for us, it also meant our digital calendar because um, we use both for he and I to share. Uh, all right. Um, the next one is missed deadlines um, because you forgot to do a task that was important or you waited to the last minute to do it. That would be a good reason to declutter your planner. Um, if you have difficulty finding anything that's in your planner, um, if you struggle to find like specific details or notes um, due to like your pages could be overcrowded or they're not organized. Um, if you have unused sections in your planner, uh, I had a, an entire marketing section set up, set up months ago, and I look back and I don't know if I've touched it in over a month. It's not that I'm not doing marketing. I'm, I'm obviously here. Um, I just didn't seem to need the section I had designed, right? So that's a, that's a good example. Um, if you are feeling overwhelmed at all, it's a good idea to do a declutter. I also think um, it's a good idea, and I don't have this in my notes, but it's just popping in my head, so we're going to go with it. Um, if, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you declutter your whole planner and you're still feeling overwhelmed, like when we get to the end of this process, if you're still feeling chaotic, I want you to do a brain dump. And I mean a really good one, like get everything out of your head and then make sure that's all in your planner somewhere that it's all scheduled and tasked out and you've got everything where you need it to be um, because it's entirely possible that you're just holding too much up here. Um, I know I have a joke all the time that if I put too much in this side, it falls out the other side, right? It's important to get that out of your head. So if we're done with this process and you're still feeling overwhelmed, I want you to go back and do a brain dump and think about, um, think about what other things could possibly not have been written down. If you're not sure how to do a brain dump, I still feel like we should do a whole training on that. Um, but brain dumps are really simple. You literally just sit down with a pen and paper and um, write everything down you can think of that's on your plate. Anything that's sitting around in your head, right? Every task, every note, every project you want to do. It could take 15 minutes. It could take an hour if you haven't done one in a while. Um, and then once you're done with that, you just write it all down on a note paper. Um, if you need more organization, we have a brain dump planner insert. Um, but once you're done writing it all down, I just want you to go back and make sure everything is scheduled out and that you have all your notes where they're supposed to be. Um, and that you've organized it by category, like it'll feel, it'll feel so much better when you're done with that. So that's just the next step after we're done. Um, I'll have to do, I'll have to do another class on specifically how to do a brain dump. So maybe that'll be next week. Um, cause I think that would be a good segue from here. All right. Um, if you have any neglect, neglected goals, right? So it's a little early in the year. If you just set new goals to be like, oh, I've, I've neglected my goals. It's the eighth. Like, be kind to yourself. But if you find yourself regularly wondering what you're supposed to do to hit your goals, it might be something worth noticing, right? Maybe your planner is too chaotic. Maybe you don't have enough structure. Um, if you find yourself procrastinating your tasks, um, that's also a good sign that your planner might be too busy. Um, if you have an inconsistent routine, you should know what you're supposed to do every day. 
Uh, if you don't wake up in the morning feeling confident that you know what you're supposed to do, there's a problem with your system and we got to work on it because that's a really good feeling and I want that for you. Um, if there's physical clutter floating around, I've noticed sometimes um, that when my brain is busy, my house looks busy. Does that make sense? So we, we structure out all of the things in our head, which for me lives in my planner. Um, and then all of a sudden the house starts to feel clean, right? We're starting to put things away where they belong. It's very um, contagious, this decluttering. Uh, and then if you don't have any room to write anything, if all of a sudden you're out of note paper, if you're out of a meeting notes, or um, if you don't have a spot to write a list, uh, if your weekly calendar is way too full, um, that might be time to start decluttering some things in your planner and your life. So if any of those spoke to you, um, you're going to like what we have to do today. Uh, let's see. So that's the first thing we, we talked about was understanding what needs decluttering. Now we're going to go on to the next part, which is decluttering your planner. All right. Uh, let's see. So we're going to purge unnecessary items. That's the core of what we're going to talk about. Um, this is my step-by-step -step process. It is lengthy. It will take you a good chunk of time to do it properly because it's not just your planner. It's everything to do with you use near your planner. So I'll go over it. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is making sure that you don't have any outdated content in your planner. This means um, old calendars, anything kind of old dates. Uh, you can start with the past months. We just uh, we just flipped over to 2024. You do not need 2023 sitting in your planner. Um, you can take those pages out if you need to keep them. If there's some reason you need to keep them, maybe for um, legal purposes, tax purposes, something like that. Maybe you've memory planned. Create an archival planner. Um, uh, and I do have a, a blog post on that. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, it's important that you don't keep these things in your planner because if you have to flip through them to get where you're going, that's wasted time, right? It's visual clutter too. Um, I take my months out as soon as they're done. I don't leave past months in my planner. Um, and then I migrate my tasks and my appointments and anything I needed to know. So what I'll do is I'll look and see, you know, oh, so-and-so's birthday was on the 3rd of October. I'll go ahead and write that down on the 3rd of October for next year, right? Um, and if I don't have the next year, this is just kind of a inside planner hack, I guess. If I don't have the next year's month for that, I will take it and put it on a sticky note and I will washi tape that sticky note to the inside of that divider. And that way I can see it when I put my calendars back in there later. Um, why do I washi tape my sticky notes? Because I don't trust sticky notes. Um, as we try to get the ultra sticky sticky notes for you, but you know, after, after a few months, they could still fail. So I washi tape my sticky notes and the nice thing about washi tape is it typically doesn't ruin anything it's sticking to. And so it's a great place, great way to keep your notes in your planner, but keep your planner safe from being ruined. So that's kind of my hack there. And then, um, I migrate anything like that. My bills get migrated, my, um, any appointments that didn't get taken care of, if I have tasks that didn't get done, they all get moved to the next month or the month um, after that. I go through literally line by line, um, but I personally don't save old calendars in an archival planner because once I've migrated everything, I really don't need it anymore. Um, I've tried, I've tried saving it and I never go back to it. And so I've decided, you know what, going forward, I'm just not gonna save the calendars. I'll just keep migrating them the way that I do, but I'm very thorough. I actually highlight off or cross off everything in my planner as, or everything in that spread as I migrate it to another spot. So I know I covered everything. Um, and then I make sure that um, all of the ta tasks got checked off or crossed off and I don't keep it in my planner. Um, if there is anything I need to keep, like meeting notes, I typically keep all of my meeting notes. Um, I still migrate those, but I also keep those. And those are the things that typically go in my archival set. So um, then let's see, do you save old month inserts in case you need to review something? I don't because I review it right then and I move it. So um, you have to figure out what works for you. I know my, my mom is a realtor she's a, a broker and so there's a lot of things she has to keep for like tax purposes for legal purposes um and so she keeps her entire calendar she binder clips hers and puts it in a file folder um, she doesn't do the archival setup but whatever works for you is fine with me either way 
All right. Um, and then you're going to go through and you're going to start assessing each section. You're going to go section by section and you're going to look um, and see what do you need it? Is there anything in there that you can move? Is there stuff that needs to get rid you need to get rid of? Um, you've got daily, weekly, monthly notes, um, any of that go through it and actually look at it one page at a time and flip through and make sure it still needs to be in your planner. Um, is it relevant? Is it relevant anymore? Do you even care? Would you care if you didn't have this in a year, in six months? Um, and is it beneficial to your current goals or your daily life that you have that in your planner? These are good questions to ask before you pull out anything. Um, like I said, I had an entire marketing section I wasn't using. It doesn't mean I'm gonna get rid of that marketing section, but clearly there's something there that the way that I set it up is not important to me or I would be using it. Um, and so I'm gonna restructure that entire section and use it for things that are going to be needed. Um, I only have so much room. Don't get me wrong, these, um, these two inch discs, they hold a lot of pages, right? But I still only have so much room. So if something is not important, it's gonna get removed. All right. Um, I literally yesterday went through and page by page looked through my planner to make sure everything is still there. Um, and I can show you how much got removed for me. Um, it's really not terrible. I have it here because I haven't finished migrating all of it. But this is the amount of pages that I removed yesterday. Now, keep in mind, I look at my planner um, every day and I go through it pretty thoroughly every month. And I still had a good 15 pages of stuff that didn't need to live in my planner. Um, all right. So once you find all of this unnecessary stuff, you're going to, um, you're going to remove it if it's removable, right? If you have a, a planner that's removable the way that ours are at Jane's Agenda, we have um, disc bound and ring bound planners primarily. And so everything is removable. You can move things around, um, take it out. You can always create an archival planner. Um, if you don't know how, let me put that link on the screen. I do have a pretty thorough blog post. It's very easy. Um, create an archival planner, um, janesjenna.com slash archival. Pretty much everything that um, I have previously taught you is going to be in our blog um, or on our YouTube or both. Um, sometimes sometimes we throw both, both places. Um, and that way you can have everything you need to know. But create an archival planner. I highly recommend it. Um, my archival planner is sorted by month. So it says like January to December. It has multiple years behind January. So it has like January, 2021, January, 2022, January, 2023, all in the same tab. Because when I'm looking for a month, I am able to find it that way. I don't need to sort it by year. So, um, and I just have some, some like larger plastic discs on it. I don't, it's nothing fancy. Um, let's see. How often do you review your planner daily clutter? I recommend you do that at least monthly, Linda. Um, and we'll cover that again, um, but at least monthly, um, just kind of look through it. As far as this big declutter, I want you to do that quarterly. Um, take the time to do it. Um, so you're going to pull out anything that's unnecessary. You're going to migrate any tasks. Um, I want you to look for any kind of duplicates. So if you have things written multiple places in your planner in different sections, Maybe you don't need them in multiple sections, right? Um, let's see. We've got a comment here. Uh, I have structured decluttering. I needed done. Thought was going to be great to have a bigger planner, but with so many spaces to fill in, the structure of the page felt cluttered trying to fill. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about embracing white space there. You do not need to fill every single area out of your planner. Big white space means lots of freedom in your life. Um, so don't feel like you need to fill everything out. Um, I have a large section of notes in my planner and they're all empty because I use it to hold extra note paper. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't have to all be filled out. Um, so if you are writing things in multiple places, the only time that I write things in multiple places in my planner is um, if I'm using my monthly to plan ahead, it'll be there and then later it'll go in my daily. Um, but that's about it. Every other time it goes in one spot. Why do I put it in one spot? So I know exactly where to find it. 
Um, if I have that in multiple places, and let's say, let's say you keep something written down in three places and you forget to put that thing in one of those places, later you look there and you're like, it's not here. Well, it's in one of the other three places, right? It just, it's too much. Um, don't rewrite things. Uh, you don't need to create a section that works and keep it there for whatever the topic is. Um, we're gonna consolidate our notes. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like a fresh dot grid page. It's probably a problem but I don't like to write on a messy page that I've already started writing on. Unless I'm trying to keep just like notes for the day or something, I like a fresh doc grid, which means I have 15 sheets of paper that have a quarter of the page filled, right? What a waste of space in my planner. Um, and so I consolidate those every quarter. I go back and look through and I, I condense and I rewrite things and I maybe I don't even need the note, um, but I don't need 15 sheets that are not filled up. Um, and so I'll uh, put a nice heading at the top of each section, draw a nice line in between each one so I can look through. And you know what I found? It actually works better for me because I don't have to flip so many pages to find what I'm looking for. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for joining us. All right. So we're going to look for multiples. Anything you have that's um, duplicate of each other, you don't need that. Um, I noticed that I have dot grid journal notes and flex notes. Those are my three big um, note taking pages, right? And then I also keep two different task lists. I have the quad list and I have the regular task list that has two columns. Oh, no, 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 I have three. I have, I also have the deadline task list, right? Do I need all six of those? Probably not. I could probably get down to um, two or three instead. And that would tell me that I have less to have to look through in my planner. I love having all the inserts. If you're gonna have all the inserts, that's great, but maybe you don't need to keep an entire pack of each one too. Free up that space. 2024 is gonna be a killer year. We're gonna be busy. We need that room in our planners. All right, um, then I want you to start simplifying, right? You've got too many trackers, too many lists. If you've got things that you're not keeping up with, a good sign. So like I have a habit of, <laughs> This is gonna be funny. I have a habit of filling out um, my habit tracker and then not doing it, right? Why am I not doing it? Well, it's obviously not a priority to me. If it was a priority to me, I would be going back to fill it out. I would be going back to use it. I clearly don't need it or don't value it when I fill it out that way. It's not that I don't need a habit tracker. I don't need what I'm writing on the habit tracker, right? Maybe those things are not something that we need to have. And so that's a good sign to me that something is not working. If you don't feel the need to go look for it, to use it, if you're not desperate to go check those things off, probably not working for you. It's a good sign it's time to mix things up. We need to be effective this year. We don't have time for busyness. Um, and so if there's something like that in your planner that you're just not getting around to, are you only keeping it out of obligation because you told yourself you'd use it? Right? I know that's kind of deep. Um, because if you don't actually need it, find a system that works or a system that you actually need. This is a good time for some self-reflection. Um, but it is okay to decide you don't need a part of your planner. Um, every once in a while, we'll have an insert where I never use like the back sheet, right? And then I feel guilty. I have this whole big back sheet of my planner each month or each week or whatever the insert is that I'm not even touching. And so I'll find myself actively trying to find ways to use it and I just don't need it. And so I'm really only doing it out of guilt. That's so silly. My planner doesn't guilt me. It doesn't care. Your planner wants you to be effective, right? If we're talking like that. Um, so you do not have to fill up every page. It is okay if occasionally a page is completely empty. Have you ever seen those, um, like when they do workbooks and stuff, it goes, this page intentionally left blank. I feel free to like write that on a sticky note and pop that on that page and feel okay about it. You do not have to use every page of your planner. Um, as long as the bulk of it is getting used, you're okay. Um, all right. So the other thing is if you have so many dividers and page finders and tabs and um, you got 45 of our hybrids in there and you can't find what you're looking for because you have so many of those, maybe it's time to simplify. So um, I try to limit myself to only the dividers I need. I frequently take them out, change them out, try different things if I'm not using them. 
But if you have so many tabs, you're having to flip through three or four tabs before you find what you're looking for because you can't remember what note tab you put things in, that's a good sign. It might be time. Um, I love I love when people decorate planner spreads. I love the stickers and the washi tape and the fancy handwriting. I absolutely love it. But if you have so much of that going on in your planner that you can't find what you're looking for, if you can't see the tasks, maybe it's time to simplify that as well. Um, these are just ideas. I don't know what your planner looks like, obviously. So you have to make these decisions for yourself. Um, Linda, there's no exact rule um, on, on how many dividers. Um, I personally use um, a set for my lifestyle things. It's if I need to find something and I can't find it, that's a good sign I need another divider um, or I need some other system. If there's, there's a balance there. If you find yourself breaking up the same thing multiple times, then maybe you have too many. Um, you have to find that sweet spot for you because it's going to depend on how many different types of things you track in your planner. Um, I have right now, mm, I took out some. So I have an entire year of the monthlies and then I have um, eight. Um, I actually could use two more. I just haven't gotten any extra from our stash here. Um, I have to find the ones I pulled out. I can relabel them. Um, I need two more because I need one for um, the section at the front of my planner that I've created. So um, there's no right answer, Linda. It's it's however many dividers you need to separate to find what you're looking for. That is the entire goal of, of a divider. You want to be able to find what you're looking for. So if you can't, it might be a good time to find add another one. Um, Kayla says, I stopped doing my habit tracker page. See, it, it happens. Now, if it feels like work and it's not adding any benefit to your life, it's okay to remove it. It is okay. Um, does that mean you're never going to use a habit tracker again? Absolutely not. You will probably find a time in your life when things are chaotic and you want to build a new habit and you want to hold yourself accountable. Um, the other thing, if it just hasn't become a habit to look at it, if, it, if you do need it, um, the tip is to write it wherever you write your tasks for the day, write down, fill out habit tracker. I know that sounds silly, um, but it really does work because then you'll actually go through and look and check things off until you get to where you do that automatically every day. Um, that's a good tip, especially if it's new to you. Whenever I'm doing some kind of new, new habit in general, I write it on my task list. Even though it should be automatic, it doesn't mean it is. Um, I'll give you an example, and this is a really silly example, so we're all honest here, right? I have these new earrings, right? Cute little earrings, super cheap. They were like 15 bucks on Amazon, but they don't bother my ears. I have really sensitive skin, and normally I can only wear my earrings for a couple hours before I have to pull them out. Very sad. These ones don't bother me, so I keep forgetting to take them out. They're super round all the way around. There's no pokey part, right? So I keep finding myself waking up in the morning going, oh, I should have taken my earrings out. So I literally wrote it in my calendar. Take your earrings out at the end of the day. <laughs> it's okay to have to write silly things down until you get used to doing it. So um, last night, I didn't have to look at my planner. I just took my earrings out, and I was so proud of myself that I remembered. <laughs> it's okay to have these things. Um, I had a habit tracker for one and a half years and the last three months I've not used it. So I stopped. See, it's okay. It's totally okay. Uh, I relabel things for the use I do not, I do need. So I have things in my planner and not things just because I see other people using them. If you don't use it, you might need to pull it out. Um, right. Five, five dividers. It just, see, there's no happy, happy answer. It's whatever works for you. Um, as planners, we often feel the need, feel we need everything that's introduced. It's okay to say not needed. You know, especially if you're part of our subscription box, we give you so many new inserts. And I do that because I want you to try different things. I want you brain firing and I want you to, to do those goals and try those tasks. Sometimes I only give you enough to last a month. Why do I only give you enough to last a month? People ask like, why not give the whole year? because I don't necessarily think you're gonna need it for a year. Sometimes projects and tasks and these things that we're working on, um, sometimes one month is enough to, uh, to get fire lit and to get that thing done. Um, especially when we're talking about something like, like uh, reframing a mindset, one month of doing that thing might be enough. Um, and so we do that intentionally. That doesn't mean you need to keep using that insert until the end of time. Maybe one month was enough. Maybe three months is enough, um, depending on what you're doing. 
not every insert needs to stay forever. Um, let's see. I have more comments before we move on to the next topic. Um, we're, we're talking about simplifying things and being okay. Sorry, you keep freezing. Am I freezing for people? I'm not having any issues with my internet. Hopefully not. Um, all right. Let's see. Celia says, yes, I've had to do that too. Sometimes certain things just don't apply. And it took me a while to figure that out and realize it's okay to not have certain new inserts. You know, I say try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Not everything that we design or that other people design, because I realize not everybody uses only our planner products, is going to be something that works for you. Give yourself the permission to move on. It's okay. Maybe the next thing will speak to you. Um, all right. Uh, I love the inserts in the sub box. I try them all. If they don't work after two months, then I take them out. Great idea, Tina. Um, okay, cool. Everybody else says I'm doing all right. Um, wonderful. Okay, um, I typically, the uh, router is just on the other side of this wall. And so typically I do okay here in my office. All right. Um, all right, so the next thing I want you to do, we already talked about goals. Um, let me throw, do I have that link up here? I don't, it's janesagenda.com slash goals. Um, if you haven't watched that. Um, we talked about goals a couple master plans ago. Um, and so if you have not, gone through and scheduled those out and started to put those in your planner. This is also a good time while you're looking through, making sure that you actually have your tasks in there. Um, you know, uh, have you ever heard that saying, um, my eyes were bigger than my stomach, right? You order too much food and then you get halfway through and you feel regretful that you ordered such a big meal. I think that sometimes goals are like that. Sometimes we set goals with intention um, and we, ha we have the best intentions and we're super excited. And then we realize, those were way too big, too big a massive goals or too many goals, right? Maybe you set 15 goals and you only needed five. Um, maybe with some fresh perspective, it's now been three weeks, I think, since we talked about setting goals. It's okay to de decide at any point that you really don't want to work on that thing right now. It's also okay to push it off. I was filling out um, our year, like all the different projects we have going on for 2024. And I'm like, you know what, just because I want to get this done in Q1 doesn't mean it can't wait till Q2. Maybe I want to give myself some grace and actually see my kids at, <laughs> at bedtime, right? So it's okay to change your plans. Um, the key to goals is stating your why, 100%. Our goal inserts have that at the top. They want you to know why you're doing it. Um, and it is okay to move them around. If life was maybe, maybe you're like ambitious at the end of December and you're like, I can totally handle all of this. And then now that it's the middle of January, well, not quite, but uh, early January, now you're panicking because, uh, you know, the you, the, the you that was there in December's, um, way more ambitious than we needed to be. It's okay to take them off. It's okay to push them back. Um, I want you to go through and check off any projects that you've already done or reassess them if they're ongoing. Do you need to change things? Um, I think that those are a good idea. Um, and then I need you to do a digital detox. So if you're like me, which I imagine most people do this, you use your, um, your phone and your computer and your tablet and whatever, all of your digital things. You've got your digital calendar you probably use, um, especially if you use um, calendars at work. Um, we use them side by side with our planners, right? I use Asana for task management here at Jane's Agenda, but then I go back through and I physically write all of my tasks down each day and I use my planner throughout the day. I don't use Asana because I'm not I'm just not interested in being back and forth on the computer all day long. And so I like my planner better. I also really like the um, satisfaction of getting to manually check off a task. It's, um, it kind of feels like getting a kick it, you know, I don't know. Um, and so I want you to go through and do a digital detox. This one might take you a little while. So, you know, you can do your planner first, but I want you to look at your computer desktop, your phone desktop. Do you have apps and files and things floating around places that they're just visual clutter, get rid of them. Only keep what you need in front of your face. Um, don't, don't feel that stress. Um, I want you to go through and look at your photos and your screenshots. Are you a screenshot hoarder? Because I am. Hi, I'm Jane. I hoard screenshots. Um, and raise your hand if you hoard screenshots. I screenshot everything, right? 
now I'm going to go through and clean out my screenshots. It's now, you know, a new year. It's time to do that. But I also am going to write down in my planner that I need to every month go through and do this. I don't want to wait till the end of the year. And I have, I don't even want to talk about how many screenshots are probably in there. Anyway, I don't want to wait till the end of the year next time. So I'm going to actually schedule this in my planner. <laughs> See, screenshot hoarders, that's us. We're idea people, right? We love ideas and and stuff. I think that I think it's great, but we need to then do something with them. So if you're not going to, um, if you're not going to take action on it, delete it. Maybe you're no longer that person that you were when you saved that <laughs> screenshot. Oh, I love it. There's so many little hands going up. <laughs> um, it's okay to delete the screenshots of yesteryear. Um, so those are something I want you to go through and look at. And that way you have a fresh place. I also think it's a good idea, like I said, to schedule this out time to go through your screenshots and your photos. I want you to clean up your emails. Um, I typically, uh, was getting about 300 emails a day. I am a uh, habitual. You want my email? I will give you my email. I am, I am on every device out there saying, sure, take my email. So I have all this spam, basically things that I've said people can send me that I don't actually use. If you don't use it, if it's not something that brings value to your life, get rid of it. Um, we recently started using my husband and I, um, unroll.me. Um, let me throw that on the screen. I'm not affiliated in any way, mind you. Um, but boy, have I loved this. It was free. Um, let me throw that up so you can see it. Unroll.me. Um, it was free and it unsubscribes you you just click a button and um there's three different buttons it gives you um unsubscribe keep and then roll up now the roll up was really cool because there's a lot of emails that i'm not 100 percent sure but maybe i think they're spam you click the roll up and it sends you an email every day that tells you what those roll up emails were and so it just simplifies your inbox i absolutely love it and i highly recommend it not affiliated um all right. It, uh, I will say after doing that, I'm now down to like 15 emails a day, right? Crazy. So clean. It's going to be so much nicer this year. Uh, let's see. Comments. Sorry, getting distracted. All right. My planner digital detox happens every Friday. I started that last November. That's wonderful. If you can do it every week, go you. Uh, regarding screenshots. If you get rid of the screenshot, where would you put that info that you don't want to forget or you would like to refer it back to? So I think that depends on the screenshot, Celia. Um, so you could create a folder for, um, like, let's say you screenshot recipes. You could create a, a photo, a folder on your phone for recipes and move them into a folder so you can find them later. Are you ever going to scroll back through 300 screenshots to find that one recipe you saved six months ago? Probably not. But when you are like, I want a recipe, you could go to your recipe folder and look at it. I think it's a great idea. Um, if it's something that you need to take action on and it's just like a uh, text in the photo, you could write that in your planner. Um, you could write that somewhere for your someday maybe insert or on a future task list. Um, you, it would depend on what you're screenshotting. Um, I have a lot of screenshots that are um, concepts I like, designs. There are a lot of um, color combinations because we do a lot of designing at Jane's Agenda. So I will take those and um, put those in a folder that I can look at later. And I don't keep these on my phone when I do clean out my screenshots. I put them in our Google Drive. So if you have a uh, cloud uh, that you keep files on, I would recommend doing that, but organize them by type so you can find them later. Because later you might want that thing. Um, you'll have to look at your screenshot and decide if it's something you're going to want later. Organize it by type so you can actually find it when you need it. All right. Yeah, private Pinterest board. See, if it's something visual, that would work great. All right. Um, I use my notes section in my phone. That's another great idea. I've heard people use apps and things. There's there's different ways you can do it. All I know is if they live there in my generic screenshot folder, never going to get to them. I mean, I try to go back through, but odds are if it's over like a week ago worth of screenshots, I'm not scrolling that far. I'm busy. Um, I'm trying to unsubscribe to five emails every Monday, so it's not a huge time. I we were never going to get there if I only did five emails. I really have a problem. People need to stop asking me for my email because I won't say no. I'll just like, sure, have my email. Um, I had an old boss tell me once to have an email for things that you're pretty sure you're going to end up spamming later. So he had like a, um, 
uh, an email. It's not necessarily a fake email. It's his email um, that he would give to people like, you know, when the department stores, like, can I have your email? Um, he would give them that email. So it didn't fill up his main email. And so I do have one of those, but then I forget to go check it. So you have to understand yourself. But anyway, all right, moving on. So emails, I want you to look at any unused apps on your phone. If they're apps you never touch, they're just filling up your phone for no reason and filling up that visual clutter. You're having to scroll through them. Um, I highly recommend going through and seeing if there's any apps you can get rid of. If your download folder on your computer is full or your download files, um, I, I have an Android and mine just goes into a files folder when I download something. Um, if it hasn't been touched in a while, it's just like screenshots. They don't need to live there. Go put them somewhere. Go put them somewhere or delete them. Um, and then the last one's kind of a tricky one for me, um, social media accounts. So I, I'm always very ambitious. I'm like, I like this person. I'm going to follow them. But over time, maybe their content doesn't speak to me. Or maybe it made, brought me down a little. Sometimes people post things that don't align with my core values. Um, and so I really think that going through, and if it doesn't align with your core values, is if it doesn't make you feel good about a person, if it brings you no value, unfollow them. I think that will really help. That's that digital detox, this digital clutter. You use your phone, you use your tablet, you use your laptop right there next to your planner. It should all be clean. Um, and then I want you to go through, so your planner should have only the necessary stuff left in it. I want you to start looking for things that you can clean up. It's time for a fresh start. Are your note pages full and gross? Do you need new note pages? Are your dividers dented? Have you been using them for three years? You don't need to use them for three years. Uh, a fresh, clean insert pack sometimes makes a world of difference. Um, making sure that if there's stray marks, if um, you've got stuff that visually just looks cluttered. Um, you're going to clean that up. And then I also want you to clean up wherever you plan. Um, so I typically plan um, on the couch, right? Right there sitting with my husband on Sunday evenings. We're watching TV and I sit there with my computer and my planner and I fill out everything. Um, and so I went through um, a couple weeks ago and collected all of my planning supplies, which I keep. We have an ottoman that has a shelf underneath. That's where I keep all of my planning stuff as I'm using it. I went through and organized it and put it away and went put it in the office. And I only kept there what I actually needed. And it's so nice and clean in my living room now. Um, I try to clean up my desk every week on Friday. Did not do that this week. Don't look at my desk. Um, Wherever you plan, it needs to be clean too, because if it's cluttered, it doesn't matter how clean your planner feels, you're gonna feel cluttered. So very important. Um, and then Linda already asked about this. We're gonna set up a regular review. You're gonna write it in your planner. Write down that you're gonna do a visual declutter. You're gonna declutter your planner. You're gonna digital detox and go through and clean out all of your, your photos and stuff. How often you wanna do it is up to you. At the bare minimum, write this down quarterly. One, once a year is way too far apart. Go through and do this quarterly, clean things out, do a full, um, a full clean of your planning space. Make sure your planner looks fresh. Once your planner's fresh, I want you to celebrate. I want you to enjoy it. Um, it's gonna feel really good. It's gonna feel really good to have all of your digital files. Mm. It's really dry in here with the heater on. Um, it's gonna feel really good to have all your digital files cleaned up. It's gonna feel really good to see everything where you need to have it. Um, and then I want you to commit to this. Right, we're gonna we're gonna try to talk about this quarterly going forward, so I can remind you in case you forget. Um, but I want you to commit to keeping things organized and structured once you do them. It's really easier. It's so much easier just to keep it that way than it is to try to go back and do this really big one. I'm not excited about finishing up all of these photos I have to go through. I'm only maybe 25% of the way through all of my photos. There's a lot, right? I think that um, if I had just done it on the fly, if I'd already had my folders set up, if I'd already had my tasks, boy, would I be happier about me right now. <laughs> I'm really angry at old Jane. <laughs> Keep it clean. Um, all right, so additional things we need to make sure we, we feel. We're gonna be ruthless, but thoughtful. If you haven't used it in months, probably safe to get rid of. And if you're hesitant, I want you to ask why. Why do you feel like it's essential to keep it? Um, is it just because you have an, a sentimental attachment to that note paper? If, or is it because you feel guilty? Guilt is not a good reason to make decisions. I want you to know that as a, as a woman in business, owning my own business, I've been a CEO now 10, 10 years. Um, 
women feel more guilt than they need to about everything. Um, do not make decisions about what to keep based on guilt. Do not make decisions about what to do based on guilt. Guilt is not a good reason to do anything. Don't do it. Um, find a good reason if you really think you should keep it or really think you should do that thing this year. But guilt can't be that reason. We need to find better reasons. Um, we do not need to feel guilty. Um, all right. Now, as you're going through this process, feel free to customize some things. Let's say you find out that um, that your note paper uh, being in um, the reference section worked better for you. I'm, I'm just throwing something out there. Feel free to move things around during this process. This is a good time to do it. Okay. All right. Um, if you missed our uh, master plan Monday on setting up sections in your planner, I think this would also be a good one to recap or go back through. Uh, let's see, there's the link for that, janesagenda.com slash sections. I try to make these really easy links so that they're easy to type in and remember. Um, and you can go watch that. Uh, that, that'll take you straight to the YouTube video on sections. Um, I think that would be a really good idea if you haven't already set up sections that work or if you need to refresh, um, go watch that video. All right, uh, let's see. So now we're on to segment three. We're getting close to the end here of decluttering. We're gonna talk about decluttering your life. Now this is really quick because I wanna tell you already by decluttering your planner and decluttering your digital spaces, it's going to start feeling very um, contagious. It's going to start like all of a sudden you're going to be organizing your spoons. Just watch. <laughs> do you do that? Do you organize your spoons? I organize my spoons. I'm like small spoons go here and bigger spoons go here. My husband thinks I'm nuts, but it really makes a difference. And when, when I reach into that spoon drawer, I can find that spoon I want. <laughs> so silly. Um, all right. So we talked a little bit last time about keeping a no list. I think it was last time. It might have been goals, but I think it was last time. Keeping a no list, things that you don't want to do. But if you don't have a core value list, I think that would be a really useful thing to do during this process. Um, keep a list of things in your planner that align with your core values. So, and you're going to have to think about what your core values are. What are these on a personal level? So at Jane's Agenda, um, as a business, we have core values. Um, some of our core values are things like be passionate because we're very passionate as people. Um, on a personal level, you might have act with integrity, um, express compassion, live with courage, be resilient, um, seek growth, right? Things like this. Um, think about things that are important to you. It might take you, <laughs> Kayla, Kayla and I can hang out with our spoons. <laughs> I'm, I am ridiculous that way. I'm very much a creature of habit and I get really mad when something gets moved. I'm like, that's where that cup went. I'm sure it's real fun living with me. Um, anyway, create a core value list, write it down in your planner, and I want you to start referencing it as you schedule things for 2024, as you, as you um, accept projects, as you, uh, <laughs> why wouldn't someone organize spoons? See, I've started a whole revolution here. Everybody's going to start taking pictures of their spoons. Um, so if something in 2024 does not align with your personal core values, why are we doing it? If one of your core values is act with integrity and it makes you question integrity in any way, why would you do it? Um, it's useful to have this. I want you to think about your commitments and whether they align with your core values. If it doesn't align with your core values or if it's something on your no list, obviously it's a no. Real easy. Let's take that thinking out. Let's not have to think about whether or not we're taking on this thing. Um, now, when we talk about life clutter, because we're talking about decluttering your life, I don't really mean like shoes piled up at the door or laundry baskets you haven't gotten to. I don't mean that kind of clutter, though that will automatically start getting cleaned. The more the more that you organize, the more that you structure things as we do this, um, the more you're going to automatically start wanting to do those things. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the parts of your day in your life and the things that you accept, the tasks and the schedule that make you feel drained. If you feel less than after doing that thing, I want you to stop doing the thing or I want you to find a way to do it in a way that makes you happy. Um, I hate doing dishes. I just, I loathe it, right? So what do I do so that I don't hate doing dishes? I make sure that I listen to music or I have one of my audibles on in my ears or I put the TV on. Try to figure out a way not to do it. Now, if there's something that you can remove, feel free to take it away. Don't do it. You can say no. Figure it out. Um, 
but let's not let our lives get cluttered with stuff we don't want to do this year, stuff that makes us feel bad. Um, if there's things that are keeping you from living your best life, I want you to tackle them quickly too. So like, um, I'll give you an example. If I wake up Monday and I can't find my pants because I didn't get to my laundry, I need to schedule doing my laundry or I need to figure out a way because um, I don't want to feel that stress first thing Monday morning. For me, that's life clutter. That's uh, instantly starting my week feeling terrible. Um, we're going to be intentional with our time. Um, we're going to make sure that everything we do aligns with our priorities and that it's going to help us live our best lives, right? So I want you to start thinking about that as you schedule things. Does this align with my best life? Um, so hopefully, hopefully already you've got like a whole list in your brain of I could do that. I could declutter that. I haven't gotten to that. <laughs> Screenshots. Um, that's, that's the core of getting everything decluttered. Um, now, we're going to talk about maintaining it, right? Segment four, main, maintenance. Um, is just as important as the initial cleanup. If you don't keep it cleaned up, we're just going to do it again, right? Yes, Linda, if you can delegate. I have two boys that are to the age where I can have them do tasks, like um, they're nine and 11, right? So I don't move the laundry anymore if I don't have to. If one of them is awake, I make them go move the laundry. It's good for them. It helps them with work ethic. It teaches them how to maintain a home, right? So it, when we say delegate, you don't have to necessarily delegate to someone you work with. Um, we also, um, we had a really rough time. I got COVID, it was Thanksgiving, the house got trashed. There's, uh, we had, you know, 8,000 orders. I don't even know, it was crazy. And so couldn't get to things. So we hired um, some lovely people to come and help clean up our house. And that was money so well worth like spending, absolutely made a world. So even though they didn't technically work for me, they're not my children, they're not people I would have normally delegated to me, that was delegation. I had somebody else do the thing I couldn't get time to do. Um, so maybe we think outside the box sometimes and figure out ways to get things done without us being the one that does them. Um, each year I clean out contacts out of my phone that aren't relevant or the, the, those that make me feel bad. I like that. You know, you can do that with Facebook friends too. I went from having 900 and something Facebook friends down to a hundred and something one year because I started looking going, would I want to, if they were in the room, would I be excited to show them a picture of my kids? Right? Would I be excited to tell them about what I've been doing the last year? If the answer was no, I removed them. You know how many people reached out and cared out of like 700 people? One. It was okay. And so they got added back. I don't think I hurt anybody's feelings because a lot of people were just acquaintances. It's okay to declutter things like that. <laughs> yep. See, I need them to be, I need them to be well-rounded. Um, all right, so we're going to schedule regular reviews. We're going to go back, look through, and see what we've accumulated, clear out anything completed, outdated, irrelevant links. Um, we're going to be selective as we add new things to our planner this year. We're not going to fill it. We're just not going to fill it for the sake of filling it. We're going to make sure we want to do that. We're going to be very intentional. If it's not aligned with your goals or your schedule, it might not need to be there. Um, we're going to limit duplication. We're going to try not to write things more than one place because that's extra time and that's places things can get lost. If you use digital tools along with your planner, make sure that they're not just doing each other's jobs. You don't need two different tools doing the same job. So um, I'll give you an example. I have my tasks in Asana. I keep them all there so that everybody can see what I'm working on, but I don't go in and tack, check them off there. I check them off in my planner. And then when I go back through and fill them out, um, when I fill out my planner, that's when I check off all my Asana tasks. It works really well for me, but I don't go do it all at the same time because that's just extra work. We're going to embrace white space this year. We're going to be okay about having empty spots in our planners. It is okay not to use that page or that section. You don't have to find a way to use it. Put a sticky note that says intentionally left blank. Just do it. It's okay. Not every inch needs to be used. This is visually calming too. And I want you to start thinking about that in your in your life too, not just in your planner. Is there something causing digital clutter? Vis sorry, visual clutter. I'll give you an example. I hate all of those labels that people put on every single product. I realize they're there to sell the product, but if I took that label off, it would just be a blank, empty, clear bottle. So I take them off at home. I peel all the labels off of everything. <laughs> I don't need them there. I know that that's Dawn dish soap, right? But visually, I look across the room and it's so much cleaner. So you can do that. Um, you can do that in your whole world. It doesn't just have to be your planner. 
uh, let's see. Um, Sorry, comments are scrolling fast. Decluttering an organization is a big item on my vision board for this year. My home is usually in order, but the last, last few years I've been in survival mode, not feeling, but feeling motivated this year. I think we've all been in survival mode. 2020 hit hard. You know, I had a really terrible year in 2019. Um, our chihuahua had to get put down. We'd had her since we first got married. So she was like 13 years old and I backed into my husband's truck all like within a month. And so it was just a really rough year for me. And then we had 2020 and everybody got sick and it was terrible. And, and so I feel like ever since 2019, we've just kind of been hanging on, but now's the year to claim that back. I really believe that I believe 2024 is the year we get to take control and pick and be intentional. Um, I want you to embrace your white space. I want you to streamline your system. You're going to think about ways that you can be consistent right? So maybe we color code, maybe we use the same symbol everywhere. Maybe we're very, we are very structured and systemized about the way that we do things so that we can build a habit. It becomes muscle memory that this is the thing that you do here in this spot in your planner every time. Um, it also takes out the stress of wondering how to do that thing. So try to systemize whenever possible, you're going to streamline. Um, we're going to prioritize regularly and we're gonna be comfortable saying no. Um, I want you to adopt a minimal approach. Consider what the minimum amount of information is that you need to stay organized. You don't need to write maybe the whole task as a sentence. Maybe instead of writing, take the trash out, you could just write trash, All right? Visual clutter, unnecessary. Um, we're gonna do our regular detox on our digital devices and we're gonna be mindful about what we put in our planner and what we put in our lives. Um, I'm trying to do this when I shop. I'm trying not to just shop to shop. I'm making sure it's things that I really, really want because if I bring them in my house, now they can become visual clutter. Um, and then every day, every single day in 2024, I want you to look at your planner and decide what you need to move, what you need to delegate, what you need to migrate. I want you to take action on whatever that day was. Look at your task list and move it over. Do not forget because you, you will have such you have so much more effective time use if you already know what you're supposed to do the next morning so at the end of the day schedule yourself 15 minutes to migrate your tasks check your notes look at your calendar just do it it'll be a whole world of difference um hopefully these strategies are helpful right? Hopefully there's some things here you can take away. Um, in addition, I did write a blog post, of course, and it has, um, there's a freebie on there. There's always a freebie when we do this. You can find the blog post um, at uh, janesjenna.com slash declutter. Um, I will go in and make sure we embed this video so it's easy to find there later. Um, I want you to go and read through that because a lot of the things you're probably taking notes right now a lot of the things we talked about today and even a lot more things I couldn't cover because we only have an hour. Um, I typed it all out for you. There's all sorts of notes there. Um, so do you have any questions for me before I let you go for the week? Um, before I set you free to go declutter your lives and your planners? Um, if there's anything that you feel challenged about, if you have specific questions, now's your chance. Um, otherwise, uh, while we're waiting on comments, I need you to like this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Um, this one was a little longer, but we had to cover a lot of things. And I think it's going to be a great year. We got this. Um, and so if I can swing it, the next Monday we'll do um, brain dump class, right? Um, we'll talk about how to do a thorough uh, brain dump. What's nice about that is I think I can cover that in shorter time. So we won't have to sit here for a, for a full hour um, to cover that. Um, but I think that would be a really useful thing for you to do. Um, this Thursday, we're going to do, um, we're, we're going to be there for live uh, weekly plan and peak. So make sure you come back for that. It's at 1 p.m. MST. Um, and let's see, I'm just making sure before I let you go that there's no questions. <laughs> Linda, 2019 sucked big time. It really did. It was an absolutely terrible year for me. I have never cried so much in a year. And then 2020 didn't turn out better. So uh, it was just, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, okay, cool. All right, so we've got no questions coming through. If you ever do have questions, keep in mind, we do have the chat. We have the chat on our Facebook group. Let me throw that up here. Um, go to our Facebook group. We have chats. There's one dedicated to Master Plan Monday. So you can always throw your comments in there. And if I can't get to it quickly, somebody else that was on this, um, on this Master Plan will help answer your questions. You guys can um, talk about what you're doing. I highly recommend joining the chat. 
Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, very important. Um, go get that checklist that I gave you from the blog. Um, otherwise, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Uh, <laughs> Brandy, <laughs> I love that. It was just a terrible year. Um, thank you. I will see you Thursday when we go live next time. All right. I want you to take control this Monday. You got this. I'll see you next time. Bye, ladies.